of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll call the May 21st, 2020 Village Board meeting to order. We'll call shows. Everyone is present except the library director who has been excused. Number three, agenda changes. Just asking for permission to, uh, on new business to flip A and B for the courtesy for Jackie to be able to do her presentation prior to our Schmidt Bolt Box and Veterans Pier discussion. So. And then also I will be asked to be excused at 6.45 if we're, but I'll, I'll ask to be excused at that time, so I need to leave. Okay, we will now proceed to number four, consent agenda. A, May 7th, 2020, regular board meeting minutes. B, May 12th, 2020, committee of the whole minutes. C, presentation of accounts and other claims against the village as presented. Are there any questions? I had a question. Um, I guess maybe it's not this discussion. I don't know. I just want to make sure and, and not try to pick apart any department heads. I just want to know if it's over $5,000, do we need to do anything special here to approve something? Or I guess there's just a couple on here, and I guess one was already approved, but the other one was not. And I just needed to understand when we're approving anything over $5,000. Which one is it? It is, and not picking on you, Chris. It's the it's the Outfit Squad. It's for eighty-four ninety-six. And I and I didn't understand if it was part of the original loan of, or the what we approved for the truck, or if it was something that we needed to approve. And I guess what brought that up was last week we talked of our last meeting we talked about the everything was mm -hmm. if we have something over five thousand dollars it comes to the board. I just don't know if we need to do anything special with to approve this to make it official because it wasn't it part of what we isn't it part of the well I know we discussed this at length probably a year ago or so and we thought that <clears throat> department head should come to us with any expense five thousand or over for discussion or approval is I, that right can I chime in my understanding was is that that was part of the twelve thousand uh, dollars that the board okay. was approved and at. and that was my question I just didn't know if it was so, part of that or if right. it was not and if it okay. wasn't if we needed to do an extra step tonight to approve that then we I just wanted to make sure we didn't skip a step so that no because what happened in was, the future yep I had um, an estimate from the installer at that point that's when I went to David we brought it to the board okay. that we were going to put that extra twelve it was actually twelve thousand dollars that we put into that line item just for that fact. Okay, and that's fine. I just and want to make sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then part, knowing that, that's great. I just want to make sure that yeah. yep. if, let's say, two years down the road, somebody says, well, that was never even approved. Right. We've covered it. Right. Okay. So, you know, if I do, like, I'm working on a best grant right now. So we'll get half of the money back from the bulletproof best grant. However, but if it exceeds, is it 4000 or 6000 Well, and Julie, I had the same questions, and I had talked with Chris okay. today too, so you weren't alone in that. But um, I thought, David, last week you said, was it four or five thousand when we were talking about approval? Five. 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 five thousand. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. So, and I okay. had the same. I just wanted, to, <laughs> and I wanted to make sure too that two years down the road, if somebody says, "Well, that that shouldn't have ever been approved," well, mm -hmm. okay, we did cover that base. I just want to make sure okay. that we're not skipping that. We step. approved the five thousand a long time ago. We talked about that. Yes, I and just I didn't know, know right. whether that was, I wanted to make sure we didn't miss a step. Right. Okay. Uh, with more budgetary things, uh, <clears throat> we should have stuck it back in capital with our truck. That way it would have been an issue. Okay. And it's, yeah, right. we'll do a better job. It, and it's not like anybody did anything wrong. No, I just I want to make sure that. What was the other one? The other one was the, and I, I learned that it was concrete. part of, it was the concrete or the garage pad or something. No, okay. And it was part of that, and I, I figured that one out. I could look back on my notes on that. So, any other questions? If not, could I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. <coughs> Roll call. Dan. Aye. 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 Motion carried. <coughs>
five pre-registered citizens to be heard, and there are none. Six committee reports, there are none. Seven unfinished business from previous meeting, and there is not any. Number eight, we will go to B, SC Swiderski Development Update, Presentation of Engineering. Thank you for the opportunity to give an update on our project. Um, I'm Jackie McElroy, I'm the Business Development Manager at SC Swiderski, and we've just completed most of the site engineering on the site, so we have finalized the buildings, the unit mix, and also the roads for the project, so just wanted to give you an update on that. Um, we do end up having 112 units at the site, and there are three different building apartment styles. So we have one 20 unit building that we call our Ashton building. There's three 20 unit buildings that are Fulton style and four eight unit buildings. We've also added an on-site office for our property management staff um, to the plan. Um, within those apartment buildings, we're showing 10 different floor plans and we have a range of square footage. So we really feel like we found a great mix for the site. So the square footage will be between 650 and 1200 um, square feet. So within those um, apartments, the mix of the units, we came up with 36 one bedrooms. There's 52 two bedrooms and 24 three bedrooms. Um, and with those buildings and all the parking that's on the site, um, we still end up with over half of the site being green space. So for a multi-family project, we really kept the density down. So it's 9.3 units an acre for that site. Um, five of the buildings have attached garages, um, then there's three buildings with detached garages for those units and then a lot of additional surface stalls, so we have adequate parking on the site as well. So everyone probably knows the location, Gibbons Road and the State Highway. Um, this is the updated site plan, so there's just been a few changes that I wanted to point out. We don't have any entrances coming in off the State Highway. There are two entrances off of Gibbons. Um, we also shifted the pond just to work with the elevation a little bit more, so you'll see it's up in the northeast corner. And that also provides a pretty nice buffer between that first building and then the driveway that goes to the house that's next door. Um, we anticipate the south entrance being the main entrance, and so that's where you'll see we placed our leasing office building. So it's right in the main entrance as tenants go in and out of the site. Um, otherwise, the buildings kind of remained in the same location. They just shifted a little bit to work with the elevations <coughs> on the site. Um, as far as renderings, we have selected the exterior colors as well, so all the pictures I show you will be accurate. Um, when I was here last, I know there was some concern of the views from the cemetery, so we had this picture created. Um, the cemetery is at a higher elevation than our buildings, so this provides one view so you can see what it looks like from the cemetery um, to those eight unit buildings that we have on the site, and then there's a slightly different view um, so you can see the other angle. So, I think it's um, a nice layout. They're looking at nice buildings up from that cemetery, but they're not looking right into the windows. There's a good separation and also the difference in the elevation. I have a question. Yeah. So where that is, where the cemetery ends and this starts, is there any type of retaining wall there? Or what is, I mean, it is, a, I mean, I'm looking at the topographical map. There is a huge drop off there. Is there something, what are these little X's on here? I'm trying to figure out on, one of the, it would be the, I think, second slide that we have. I just, I know there's a, a really big drop off there and, it, and although having that picture is really great, I guess, I, do you have a picture coming at the cemetery to see how that's buffered there? Oh, so on the other side? No, we can get a picture of that side as well. Okay. Um, and you know, we only own the land on the other side, so there's really nothing we can do on the cemetery's property. So is that what yeah, you're I'm, asking? Because that's I'm aware where the where the lot line is. Okay. My parents are buried about five feet from that line. Oh, in okay. that so corner. very close. So I guess I'm very concerned <laughs> with, with how that, that drop off is gonna be handled, because that's all sand. Okay. So right, so we're working with the engineering and then some of the other documents that you receive should show the exact elevation so you can see how they're um, planning for it, but I probably would have to have them answer the question exactly okay. how they're um, gonna be grading on okay. that, that location. So I can follow up with that. And then you want the view from like, the buildings going up. Yeah, to see what that, 
not that I'm going to see that view. It's just I'm more curious how they're going to handle that slope. office building that we've added on the site so right when you drive in off of Gibbons um, you can see on the side of the building that's where our mailboxes will be and so there's about a four foot overhang from the roof so it provides some shelter there'll be a <coughs> sidewalk there and then as people drive in and out of the site they have a convenient place to stop and um, pick up their mail um, inside of the building you'll see there's a pretty large garage so that's going to be storage space and workshop for our maintenance and grounds department so they can keep everything right on site and then there's office space inside, so there's two offices and a bathroom. And so um, we think that's a nice addition to the site. When we ended up doing the plan and it was over 100 units, we want to make sure we have dedicated space and someone right on the property. So there'll be um, staff there full time during business hours. And then after hours, it's 24 hour emergency service on the site. For the building colors, our first building is the Ashton 20 unit building, and this one has 10 units on the front, 10 units on the back with the attached garages. And um, all of them are two bedroom, two bath units. The upper units have those decks and the lower level units have their own patios. Um, that side picture shows where our mechanical room is. So there's one mechanical room um, for the building. Um, heat and water is included, so we use our hydronic heating system, so the boiler will be in that maintenance area that can be accessed from the outside of the building. Um, and these are the colors that have been selected. So mm -hmm. you'll see we're using two colors of siding, and we're also doing, it's kind of hard to see in the picture, but some is um, vertical and some horizontal, so there's some um, texture interest there. And then everything is trimmed in white, so that matches our white um, windows and the garage doors throughout the site. So we have all the windows and garage doors <coughs> matching on the property. So that's the first building. The next building, our three bedroom Fulton building. And again, the colors aren't showing up too well up there, I think, um, but it's the matching colors with the, with the white trim again. Um, this is the building that has the detached garages. So all of the middle units are gonna be the one bedrooms. And then there's three bedroom units that enter from the side. So each side of the building has four three bedroom units, two on the lower level, two on the upper level. And you'll see they have their own patios and decks on the side. Um, again, we use the same colors and then the white trim. Um, this building has their um, maintenance or the mechanical room right in the middle of the back side. So all the entrances are on the front side or the sides. And then the, this is the back view of the building as the bottom picture. And then the third building is our eight unit. So we have um, the same tan and white on it, but we added a red just to kind of have this building have a different look. Um, all the garages are on the front side, so facing the neighboring property will be just the backs of the units, and that's in that lower picture. Um, so four of the units have the patios on the back side, otherwise the front side has the backs for the units that have upper level living. Um, the end units have the two car garages, and then this building again is all two bedroom units. And then the interior renderings, these are just our standard finishes. Um, we haven't picked all the colors for the site, but it will have the LVP flooring. All of our units do have the um, ceiling fans in them. All appliances will be included. And then as I mentioned, the heat and water will be included in the rent and also cable and Wi-Fi. So um, pretty complete with the rental package. And we'll probably do a little bit different finishes in the, um, the eight unit building. That's our higher end rent. So those will have the stainless steel appliances in there and a few more upgrades. So those are the renderings of the interiors. All the units will have the white doors. Um, we keep that consistent throughout the site. And then there's 10 different floor plans, but I just picked two to kind of give you an idea. Um, the Ashton is that first building that's all two bedrooms. This is the upper level unit. You'll see there's two bedrooms and two bathrooms in that unit. Um, and pretty decent square footage. Um, that Apple floor plan is in that eight unit building and that's the one with the two car garage. So this will be the, one of the larger units on the site at 1200 square feet. But it has, um, it's a two story living. So on the main level you have the 
um, living room and a half bathroom in the kitchen and then upstairs there's two bedrooms and another two bathrooms so this one's a two and a half bathroom floor plan so we have built this at one other location right now in Weston and it's been very popular to have the, kind of the two level living so we're kind of offering all things there's main level living there's some units that are upper level and then some are two stories on the site and then just if you haven't heard about us, um, these are our completed multifamily projects, and I just like to point out all of our projects have been successfully finished. We have um, several sites under construction right now. Um, mm -hmm. I know we made a commitment to the village to complete this project by 2024, and then I'm happy to report that we do have an opening in our schedule. So we will be starting um, next year. So spring 2021 is our start date. And we are going to just move right through the project. So we're not dividing it into the two phases. We'll work right through at the 112 units. So we'll definitely be able to meet that um, guideline. Our other commitment was for $8 million in value. So we'll have no problem delivering that on the site as well as far as your tax increment value. Um, when I was here last too, there were a couple questions about our sustainable and green measures. So I mentioned our hydronic heating. Um, we also like to point out compared to competitors, we do quite um, better with our insulation. We do full blown insulation um, in the floor trusses and um, we also use the low flow water fixtures, LED light fixtures, Energy Star appliances. And as I said, one of the things we're very proud on on our sites is we often, we always have that green space because we feel like that's nice instead of condensing the site and making it very dense. What's the, uh, go back to that if you would. <clears throat> if I, can figure out well, you can't get back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the monitored uh, thermostat setting, explain that. So monitored thermostat setting. So we um, will set the thermostats, and I think it's like 72 degrees. So, okay. and then we pay for the heat, and so that just kind of controls for some people turning it up, turning it down a lot. So they're the preset. Right. So we can't change it. Somebody can't change it. I think they can lower it, but I don't think they can go uh, higher. Okay, they right? can't go higher. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there are there plans for um, like signage for the I know the, the other apartments we had an issue with that for the police and the fire for finding their way around to the yeah so one of the steps we have in the process we will meet with the fire department there's obviously a sign when you drive in but we will do the numbering however that they want it so we typically pick an address for the building and then the units within the building have the one, two, three, four, five, so the numbers. And however they want it to show up on the building, if they have certain requirements for the number size on the units, we work <coughs> with them before we make the plan. So we kind of defer to how they would like to see it numbered on the site. I just drove through an apartment complex the other day and I went apartment after apartment after apartment trying to find the numbers on the houses and I couldn't find them. Where? Um, it was in Appleton. Oh. Sharon, had, one of my wife's co-workers, wanted some, she asked me to drop off <coughs> some Girl Scout cookies. And it, I had to drive back and forth four times before I could figure out which building was the numbered building that he was actually in, because mm -hmm. they all had letters on the doors, but there was no numbers on the buildings. Yeah, and the number, yes, yeah, so we do the numbers on the building and then above each, each the, the ones with the attached garage will be above the garage door will have the, the unit number on it. But we defer to, you know, the fire department has a certain way they like it to be numbered for them to move through, but we work with them while we're doing the project. Am I remembering correctly, didn't the fire department go with someone from your, yeah? Yes. To look at the... Yes, uh, Chief, <coughs> excuse me, Chief Dorn uh, and Jack were here for one of the meetings, okay, the initial right, meetings. Right. Uh, and their only recommendation was if they could have a, because uh, the, the, the units are uh, sprinkled, but then mm -hmm. also they have a, a external um, uh, me, me, uh, hydrant on site, and I think that was a part of the engineering plan as well. Okay, I, think I there thought was there was two. some communication there. Yeah, yeah there was. And then they're also, <coughs> we had also consulted with them with the entrances because a lot of our sites have one, right. but if they prefer us to have the two, then we do the two, and that's why you know that one just kind of looks like it goes to one building, but that's an extra entrance for yeah. a they, they were concerned on that one with the turning radius of the, of the engineering okay. of the trucks. I know that so, was something. But the first entrance would allow them access to any point in the in the campus there so they'd be fine okay. <coughs> and then another step we offer while we're building if anyone wants to come out and look at it so we have had um, the police departments come out and walk through so they they are familiar with our structure and then the fire department likes to see the construction while we're doing it as well <coughs> we 
grant, they weren't weren't able to get access to 15. Is that how it ended? I, I think by expediting, and I, this was talking with Scott. Uh, I think by potentially expediting the project and moving it up, it would have been it would have been almost nearly impossible to get access to Highway 15 in the current status. Had they done something, they would have basically had it built it in and then barricaded it and not have access to it until 15 was bypassed and then they could open it up. Yeah. So that was something that, and that I think you could almost stub in, looking at it, you could potentially stub in it if the village board would make a recommendation between the two buildings on the lower left there. Yeah. It could potentially be stubbed in and, and built that way, if so choose. You would then definitely affect some of your green space though on, on the back side of those buildings as well. So. Mm -hmm. And driving out there, we just thought, you know, it, people do go pretty fast right there. And yeah. then with the mm -hmm. hill, if you're yeah. coming by the cemetery, it is a little bit hard to see. So mm -hmm. kind of yeah. having them come up. That's yeah. a better location yeah. for site distance. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so kind of our next steps as we're completing this engineering, we'll continue to update the village with all of those plans. And then we'll have um, our final building plans and everything submitted for review, landscape plans, lighting plans, everything will be submitted for their review and, and comments. And then we can follow up with those additional pictures. And any other questions? And you like the colors because we were trying to go with some <laughs> colors for yeah. you. Okay. Yeah, it breaks up the monotony. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I also am proxy to uh, what, what her and Courtney, Jackie and Courtney set me up with a Dropbox. So what I shared to and what, what Jackie is sharing with you is primarily the plans. There are <coughs> other Dropbox files that are have technical data in them. I did not put that in your packet. I put the 17 slides that you basically saw here in the packet. We can share those, but at that point, it's going to it's going to come down to get, getting to some of what Julie's asking for. It's going to be better served to have that engineering on site talking and discussing that moving forward before a developer's agreement is put in the process with the final site plans and all the approvals. That's that's going to be what we probably ask to do. Right. That's been the usually biggest. Usually, we'll come to yeah. that meeting yeah. and then they can answer all the specific questions. And they're they're finishing up their stormwater management plan. Um, I know we were doing some test pits where that um, pond is just to make sure there was some rock there that we can get through that so we can plan for that. So when they have that all finalized, then they can come answer all the questions on the details. Any other questions? Very good. Well, thank you for making the trip. We yeah, much well, appreciate it. Thank, mm -hmm. thank you very much. <coughs> it's been going, going well, and we have two sellers on this property, and they're very good to work with. So good. this has been a good experience for us. Good. <coughs> Feel free if you need to just call up, please. Okay. In the process. <coughs> You're welcome to stay, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> have a good night. <laughs> you too. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks. We'll now move to A, Veterans Park Fishing Pier and Boat Launch. I can take that. Uh, anything that was in the packet, I would disregard and let's take a look at the <laughs> handout. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The handout that I gave you. Um, so the initial, the initial uh, pieces that were in the packet were from the first run uh, after Carl and I did some work this uh, last couple of weeks here with the uh, the piers and the, the launches in the village here. We had some better ideas. So what we came back with was, and uh, I think on the fifth page is a, is a pretty good synopsis of what we're looking to do. I'm sorry, it's on the seventh page. Um, so it, it talks about the original capital improvement planning. Uh, and as you can see, there's been some significant money set aside or proposed for 2021 and 22 to install a fishing pier in Blackwater Park, as well as Veterans Park, as well as a new dock for the boat launch. Um, tonight, we'd ask you to consider uh, expediting those plans. Uh, and, and the reason being is because we reached out to Schmidt Boat List and Docks uh, to find out that any work that we would want them to be completed would be pushed into se September or October of this year. That's how far they're booked out. At that point, with the economies of scale, they said they could do work us better pricing if we could complete two of the projects at one time rather than bringing their barge out on two, two uh, separate occasions. Uh, it's, I believe in the pricing it's $750 just to launch the barge. So at that point, Carl and I started talking about the projects. Um, 
and we, we want to ask permission to expedite the capital improvement planning to be able to do both of these projects this year. Um, so the revision of the plan in the, in the middle paragraph is we, we'd like to have to approve the funding for the new fishing pier at Veterans Park, which is a permanent structure. This is something that would stay in, in the lake year round. We'd also like you to approve the funding for the new boat launch, which is also another permanent structure. These would all be with driven pylons, um, uh, Aztec decking, uh, maintenance proof, steel decking, and then weather treated as well as uh, weather retardant decking. These are meant to be built in Wisconsin, so they, they will last with proper maintenance and routine. It should be zero maintenance, but with proper care and treatment to them, they should last for a long, long time. Um, Schmidt Bull Lift and Docks has also allowed or will place a temporary placement of the portable fishing pier in Veterans Park for the remainder of the summer. That was something that I had asked to be expedited on their list to see if we could get these in earlier in the year with the situation we're in now. It'd be nice to have kids another opportunity to fish. They just can't bump their schedule on their on their barge. Like I said, it's September, October is where they're at with placing permanent pylons right now. Uh, some, some instances work seven days a week. Um, we would then take the, the, the public works crew over the course of the winter coming up, we would take the existing boat launch and repurpose that, uh, make it a, flo a floatable pier that we could then use and repurpose that in Black Otter Park and make another fishing pier out of it. So we would be able to satisfy all of our next three years of capital planning for the lake with um, the projects that we can complete in this year. If you see the financials on the bottom, the total money needed for the project is $44,428. And we'd be utilizing the following funds. 2020 CIP, which has already been approved for $5,000. At last night's board meeting, uh, they also approved the allocation of $5,000 if we go ahead with the projects. The bold calendar, uh, <coughs> fiscal calendar also ends on 9-1-2020. So then we'd be able to take $10,000 from Bold, which they've already promised for the years to come, uh, that would be for 2021. The Bolt Launch Reserve has in excess of $12,000, we'd be able to use that funds. Veterans Park Reserve has $4,500, we've allocated $3,000. And the biggest ask is that we would take the Future Projects Reserve Fund to the tune of $9,428 to complete the projects and uh, be able to build out these, uh, what I would call extremely, extremely nice amenities for the village. Um, all of the prior pages have the uh, renderings of what, what we're looking at. The fishing deck, 36 foot wide by 20 foot, 25 feet out. That would be in Veterans Park. What you don't see on that rendering is two eight foot benches on both sides to the rear of the, of the pier to allow for seating while people are fishing. Um, and then the boat, the boat dock is later on in the a map later on. That one has a 48 foot reach with a 16 foot extension, a bench on that, handrails down one side, and you'd be able to moor five boats on that at one time. So there's enough cleats and bumpers on that to allow five boats to tie off if and when they're waiting to, in line to get taken in or out. Um, I've worked with Schmidt boat docks on my own property. Um, I've seen them install this past winter. Uh, we're not going to be in line for that, but uh, their, their, work, their work is impeccable. So this is a, a very large expenditure, and it's open for discussion. So. Carl, the, uh, oh, go ahead, Peter. I'm a little confused. Your drawing says boat launch. To me, that meant uh, concrete down to the lake to launch a boat. But what you're really saying is it's a boat dock. Yeah. Is that correct? Correct. Well, thank you. Veterans Park. Does this does this tie into the current path that's there? Yeah. yeah. So it does, and it doesn't affect anything. I mean, we, we wouldn't have any expenses on that shoreline. No, believe it or not, there's riprap there, and there's gravel place, and everything. Yeah, from the ice. This is yeah. this is the the first step. Something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and and I, yeah. Later, there's always room for improvement there. I'm just thinking you uh, got some trees down there and a, and a path. I just wouldn't want to yeah. have to replace all that. I mean, no, this we're is not, just hiding that. Touch it. We're going to go straight off the end of the path right onto yep. that. So, so and, and for somebody who lives across the street from this, there are people fishing starting around and five in the morning and, and it goes till dark or even beyond. And there's just loads of people out there. This would be huge. 
This would be I, I think it'd be a great amenity. It would be huge. <laughs> So the total project is $44,428. Yes. Up at the top, it says approved funding for the new fishing pier, which is your drawing pier, which is a permanent fixture, for $20,462. Is that correct? Yes, but this is the old rendering because the, what they did is they added two benches that are $1,100 each on the side of it. So, so I have this rendering right here. There's another one earlier in the pack. That's the boat dock right there. That's the boat dock. Second page of the here. There it is. Okay. So you gotta add a you gotta add twenty two hundred dollars to that because there's the benches are not pictured on there. Okay. That so we why. have two permanent fixtures down there then. Two and then you'd have we would refurbish the current boat launch. All right into a portable that would have to come in and out just like the kayak launch does in the black rock. Okay, where are these people that fish that pier the park? Park at the bank. Well, I don't know where they're parking now. There's people all, all over the place. Down on Main. There. They park on Main. They actually park behind the bank. It's, they park behind the bank. Yeah. Yeah, but that... It, it's private property. Yeah. It's what? It's private property. Where? The bank. Okay. Yeah, I know it's private yeah. property, but the bank is gone. Depending yeah. upon who buys, who buys the it. building. Yeah, who buys the building. That might be an issue. But people do park on Main. In fact, somebody yelled across <coughs> the street this, this past week asking, can we park here? And I'm going, yeah, it's parking. The other, Carl and I, we were doing some maintenance by the band. We also saw people parking behind Black Otter and walking over. There were people doing that, but saw them doing that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This There's has been in the plans for a long time, long before current admin, current yeah. board members. These are a lot of kids on bikes. You watch, there's kids with bikes with their fishing poles and they go down. This is, this would be a big deal. And yeah. a lot of people, people walk. walk to it. People yeah. walk. I mean, I just, yeah. you see kids with their fishing poles on bikes right. all the time. Also when, in the packet is the, a copy of the last page. <laughs> is a, a Nathan printed today that that's the reserve fund overview to let you know what is currently in the reserve funds. So it would, it would show you that we have um, funding for this. Um, we, Carl and I, we did, Carl took the time today to update the 2021 if we went in this direction. What we would do then is because of the utilizing in, in future capital plans, then we would take money and reestablish these funds. We'd put it right back into these funds to restabilize these funds, especially like the, uh, um, Veterans Memorial Fund because if there's work that needs to be done on the statues or stuff. We want to make sure there's ample amount of funds in this to uh, take care of the monuments. Yeah, the DNR uh, boat launch fund that was established for the sole purpose to you know, make improvements down there. Uh, bold participation uh, takes the edge off of it quite a bit. Uh, the only issue I see is we're using a little bit out of future projects. But we're going to put that right back in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and where would that come from when you say we put it right back in there? Uh, well, in 21, we just dedicate some money back into future projects as a reserve addition. It would be in capital, but it would be down at the very bottom where we put it back into a reserve account. Uh, future projects, which is at 179 yeah. and change currently. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so where's this proposed boat uh, dock launch mm -hmm. supposed to be? This is supposed to be a black outer. The boat launch? This, well, it's you've got one. this one. That is at the current boat launch on Lakeview Drive. That's at the current, okay. Yes. It needs to be replaced. Um, okay. Th okay. Th this, uh, the, I, Carl and myself, Chris Schultz, uh, we launched it uh, this year. It's in, it's in serious disrepair. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's a, it, was made, it was made to be a rolling dock. It's now a floating dock. Yeah. Um, it's... Oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah. So that, yeah, that's I, where I got, you yeah. said it's not. However, okay. the the pieces that are there are valuable. Where we could repurpose those into another really nice amenity for Black Otter. It just needs some serious TLC. It needs to be taken out, taken back to the shop, refabricated, properly set up, and then relaunched on on a site, and then left there for winter when we can just reestablish. We can put it back in, like we do with the kayak launch. Okay. So. And then the purpose for that in Black Otter would be just just another fish. amenity. What's that? Right now they fish from the kayak launch. They, they Which I have a big sign that says "No fishing from kayak launch." Yeah, <laughs> they walk right past it. And they fish from the kayak launch. 
Okay. Yeah. All right, so it'd be a, a spot to go fishing. It's a very popular lake, and yeah. uh, oh yeah, I, I agree. I just try and I just try and understand what yeah, the, what the purpose because yeah. because you're not there. launching a boat there, so yeah. no. No, there's parking okay. back there too. I see people park back there all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're gonna protrude it's 48 feet out into the lake. I'm sorry. Currently at 32 feet. It's currently 32. Yes. Okay. When you pull that out in the winter, where do you store that in black Island? Right on the shore. It's just yeah, pulled right in where so it just, is. So just just barely off. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Your house isn't too far from where it is. If you know different path than the. First you want. If you know different than the kayak, it, it's brought right onto the shore. If we end up buying a post hole pound or electron or an air pneumatic, we might make it permanent. Who knows? So the one down there, <coughs> we'd have to do it when the ice is in. So. What's, it, what's the size of the pier that we have when it's on the bridge? You know, for just for scale. And so this one's 36 feet wide. The, by the bridge there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's 10 feet by about, mm, I'm going to say about 75. Okay, so that's about half the size of that. Yeah. Bulls all down line with this also then. Approved last night. Yeah, yeah. and that's a line and item on our property taxes. It'd be nice to have. Yeah. 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 It, it would be nice to start seeing some amenities. You know, we've been talking about making improvements to Main Street and our lake and our parks, mm -hmm. and uh, we can do a lot of damage here with just just a little bit of financial input. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that money's already been earmarked. We're just asking to bump it forward with just a little over nine grand on future projects. You um, get you get some reflectors or something planned for this for the stone bill. The stone just sticking out 25 feet into the lake. There's already quite a few docks that stay out there all winter long. I mean, okay. if you're running into docks, you're probably drunk or whatever. But yeah, we can't put stickers on there. Well, I just meant, you know, yeah. you're putting something new in the lake, you know, yeah. and they, they, you know. We typically set orange cones, but I most of the them will be able, I stay near the shore too, and you know, and I, I go out there at night after they got the, the radar run set up, and I go out there when there's nobody around, and psh, you know, yeah. turn back around and come back on the shore and park and walk up and downtown. Just for you, we'll do that. That's well, I, I would, you know, <coughs> just something, I mean. Uh, That's the no, we, we can do that. We, we like to do that. I'd be obligated to call 911 if I heard something. We don't want to see them damaged. Yeah, you would, you yeah. would love to think that people, you know, are smart enough to not hit it, but, you know, people in boats hit docks all the time and, you know, they're out on the river and yeah. it says something new and it just it doesn't have to be something big, just so they don't miss it, and with the with, uh, with some you. limited visibility. Yeah. So, so okay, go ahead, Peter. So, what do you need tonight? It well, would be a motion to approve. Uh, what what the, what we would have to do is send back uh, part of these contracts. I'd have to sign them, send them back, and we'd have to get a voucher for eleven thousand dollars. We would want to approve the entire expenditure for the forty-four thousand four hundred twenty-eight dollars, utilizing the funds that are laid out. Uh, including the, the CIP, the bowl the contributions, the re reserve fee from the boat launch and the veterans, and then future future parks, all totaling forty four thousand four hundred twenty eight dollars. You had a question. I was going to ask the same thing. What are you looking for tonight? Well, yeah. Motion to approve the expenditure. Okay. And then what? What I would have to do is send back these two contracts signed, and we would have to create a voucher for eleven thousand dollars. If you see on the on the contracts, they're asking for deposits in the amount of five thousand for one project, six thousand for the other. And that would reserve, that would then reserve that barge for installation in this fall. Does that also include the temporary? Yes, no charge on the temporary. Okay, no That's charge what on that. I, I asked them and I said, is there something you can do? I said, we want to get kids out with, in the wake of everything that's going on with COVID, these kids Absolutely. need to be outside. Yep. Do they have to drive their equipment on the park property? No, that'll, they do that'll, be, that'll be basically like a walk-in with, um, okay. With uh, expandable legs that basically fold down and go to the base. I'm just thinking about Carl's guys with big butts and they yeah, 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 no, no. I wouldn't want them to have to mow that. Okay. No. All right. So without going into a long dissertation, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to make a motion to approve <laughs> the uh, the amount of forty-four thousand four hundred and twenty-eight dollars to. Uh, Build a new Hortonville boat launch on Lakeshore Drive. Is that correct? Boat launch dock. Lakeshore yes. Drive. Yeah. Yes. Lakeshore Drive. 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 Correct. Drive. Correct. 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 Mm -hmm. And a new fishing pier uh, at Veterans Park. Per, and I'll call this attachment A because it's too 
There's too much information here as to the amounts to outline in the motion. Okay. So Jane, if we make this attachment A, everything's included here, costs, okay. financing. Second. Roll call, Dan. Aye. 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 Motion carried. We'll move to C. Any other miscellaneous topics for future discussions? Anyone? Nothing. Then we'll move to nine. Report of village officials. A. Administrator. <coughs> Another handout for you that was on your on your files. Uh, Carl and I have been uh, working two or three days a week with Public Works uh, out in the field to help with the uh, spring projects in, in lieu of the two injuries that are still handling, uh, still going on with the department. So uh, happy to report a lot of stuff's getting done. Yeah. So it's been a good right. couple, good couple of weeks here. So. Economic development, TID 3 update. Um, as you see, on site logging has concluded their clearing of the 1.12 acres. Um, and then what you've also seen is the initial shove of dirt uh, being done by Immel excavating. That's the first phase of site leveling. Uh, they are waiting on a high hole to remove the stumps and other debris that are in there in the side of that hill basin. Um, and it's expected that we're going to probably drop that about 10 feet. Uh, and then um, in, the, in the weeks coming here, you're going to see, I believe next week, they're going to start with the mulching and uh, processing of the lumber on the site. So um, we're hoping within a week's time, we should be very close to a um, final um, uh, lot that would be available for viewing. Um, Steve, Steve Romatz with Blue Design Group met with Carl and I out there yesterday. Uh, he's, he's impressed. Um, the owners or the potential people that are interested in purchasing it are um, also been on site, so they're, they're, there's interested parties. <coughs> um, planning and zoning also met yesterday. Uh, they did give approval to Mr. Clegg's Wild Wind Phase 2. Uh, that is scheduled to go before the Village Board on June 4th for a replat of that division. Um, happy to announce with community development, uh, the meal site's been uh, growing every week uh, this past Wednesday, yesterday. Uh, it's now up to 55 users for the village. Uh, they had quite a line of people in and out of here yesterday in the morning. Um, update on the reopening of Village Hall. Um, working with Jane and Nathan and her team, um, we are trying to coordinate with the library to make the right move for reopening the Village Hall. Um, the concern is, is if we open prior to the library, we're going to have traffic in the Village Hall. They're not going to be able to get in the library. They're going to become upset, upset, agitated. So we're we're going to I think we're going to coordinate the opening once we hear from the DPI to open it the same day as the library. Um, we've heard as early as June first. Pat has said possibly June eighth. Um, we don't want to rush into anything. Um, there's everybody's been getting by with drop boxes. They've been calling for reservations if they need it. We've been meeting them at the door to pick up and process. So it, it's functioning. Uh, it's it's an inconvenience. But uh, I think another week or two wouldn't hurt anybody in the matter. So that's consistent in the region. So that's yeah. not yeah. out right. of the ordinary. Yeah. It's yeah. consistent. Uh, update on the garage project, concrete foundation and pad of the garage has been completed. Trusses are ordered. Uh, from what I told Chris told me this morning, they're in. They're they're in at uh, New London Building Supply. We have set a date ten, tentative construction starting the week of June 8th. Uh, Chris with his injury, we're hoping that. Uh, He'll be ready to go by June 8th. Uh, update on the cemetery land purchase. At the last board meeting, I proposed selling the property to the village board. Uh, I was kicked back saying, hey, let's reach out to all four property owners adjacent. Uh, I did that by a letter. I have heard back from all of them. They've all agreed to purchase all of the property as well. So there will be, be a conforming property line. Um, working with Carroll Land Surveying, they've already done the initial plot. Uh, I've handed it off to Bob Sorensen, who's going to transfer all the deeds and um, take care of all the legal matters. Uh, total revenues expected is to be $4,400 and expenditures $2,000. So we should net $2,400 in the deal. Uh, <coughs> uh, youth sports meeting last night. Uh, it did come with some mixed reviews. Uh, they're trying to plan their schedule for 
uh, the summer months here are ball in Otto Miller. Uh, typical season would be starting next week in early June. Uh, they've kind of pushed it back. They're looking to doing uh, practicing in the months of June, games in July. Um, they may be at the village board meeting on, on June 4th. They're, they're kind of up in, up in arms on what they want to do, but they want to put it in front of the village board for approval. They think it's the right thing to do. So I, we may not hear from them, we may. And, and I just told them to let us know what, how they want to process. Um, they are, um, either way, they're going to do a very abbreviated season this year, so it will not be uh, more than a month long. Um, multiple emails that I've been receiving uh, from numerous economic development corporations and any other planning uh, organizations have been to, have been sent out to the businesses in the village trying to give options and information in regards to COVID-19, best practices, grants, reopening procedures. Um, any information that I get, I'm, I'm putting it right out there to see if it, if it aids anybody in the village. So have heard some good, good returns on that as well. Um, Outside meetings, uh, unfortunately, they're still limited. So I did have the HYS meeting last night. Also, the uh, gold meeting was last night. And I had a plethora of webinars in regards to <coughs> COVID-19. So, any questions for me? So yeah. that property next to Gilbert's there, um, I went and walked at last night. To, so you're waiting for a like a, an elevated backhoe or something of that nature? Yes. So you're going to get that big, the big tree that what's yes. left of that is going to come so out essentially the he, bulge. he cut to where he can access it from a hole so now what they're going to do is take the stumps out of the side of the hill and set them aside those are going to be taken to the composting site yeah then there's also some um, fill that's we call it spoils carl wants it and they're going to truck that off to the new composting site adjacent to Otto miller then there's some really good sand and clear fill that that's got to come out of there that's going to get trucked over to the baseball field to use for for filling the fifth field on the lower level, which is the soccer field, correct? Yeah. They're, we're going to cut that hill down to about 35 to 40 degrees. We don't want it too steep, eroding away, that kind okay. of stuff. Once we establish that grade, then we'll know how big of a lot of somebody can build on that. So, uh, we're, we're estimating. Well, it's already pretty good size now compared oh, to what yeah, it was. It was way bigger than what I uh, thought it was, but that's really narrow where that bulge comes in. Yeah. That that's really limits what you could do. sticks out quite a ways. Yeah. Yeah. Because the majority of that hill at that point is on our property. So once we cut that back and get all that out of there, uh, I think they're going to be pleasantly surprised how much buildable area there is. is the, does the property line run? I, I, there's a stake in the driveway and then there's a second stake. Does it run straight yep. through there or is yeah. it? Then there's a lot more. Left right where that bulges, the majority of the, the, to the peak of the hill and then about 15 to 20 feet down the back side of the hill is still on yeah. the property. That's so we're gonna we're gonna try to pull as much of that away as we can. That's a much larger property than I thought it was. And we didn't we didn't compromise any of the trees on their property. None of them okay. were taken that or are even close to the property. Though. So okay. uh, I don't. I am just asking to be excused at this time. Absolutely. Thank you. <coughs> Julie had asked earlier when you watch the spending it with the emerald, with the work that we had to bring the hole in here. It's possible we make over five thousand dollars. Just saying. Okay. Well, you can do it. Mm -hmm. It's possible we may go over 5000 for Emil's work portion of this. <laughs> I just don't want anybody's... But anybody. I tell you what, it, it's changed the minds of the engineer and I think the people want to buy it because they can see how they big the lot it. is. It's huge. Most yeah. people don't have vision, they can't see. Uh, yeah, the way, that, the way that it was laid out, I couldn't see it either. I walked yeah. it when I walked it last night and I thought, okay, you could put a building here and have a parking lot in the front and a parking lot in the back and uh, it, I think it would be two substantial. Now, easily. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, it was all it all it's all contingent on getting that bulge out of there. But yeah. Yeah. It's gonna take a big machine, but okay. yeah. next time you go up there, give me a call. We'll go sift for some uh, arrowheads. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. We used to find arrowheads up there when we were kids. Well we won't find any. No. <laughs> it's yeah. it's not a burial ground, don't get me wrong. Yeah. It was a campsite. <laughs> we won't find any. That's all I got. Can you will then move on to B, clerk treasurer? I don't have anything. Okay. C, director of public works. Uh, I just wanted to point out that I had handed out a modified version of our capital plan for the next two years. Uh, this is what it would look like if we went ahead with the uh, purchase of the uh, boat dock and the uh, fishing pier. Uh, I forgot, I left bold in there for 2021. The only difference is I'm going to pull that out 
bulb just their fiscal year starts this summer, so they're going to bring the 2021 money in for the fishing dock. So that won't be there on 21. So uh, that's it. Just scratch that off, and everything else should be pretty much the same. Uh, speaking of five thousand dollar purchases, we had an SVR blower go bad at the pump wastewater plant. <clears throat> that's a machine that oxygen oxygenates the uh, uh, reactor basins. Anyways, the uh, it must have spun a bearing or something like that, and we had to order a new unit. And it, I went ahead and ordered it without waiting until the meeting, and we got it in yesterday. It was nine thousand two hundred dollars just for the blower. Uh, so we're going to try and get that installed next week, staff will. Uh, I contacted the, our base engineer with the DNR. Uh, they authorized the use of equipment replacement fund money uh, for that purchase, which is why we set that money to the side every year. Uh, right now we have $327,000, $315, $315 in there. Uh, we haven't added this year's $37,000 in. Uh, so our equipment replacement fund continues to grow will be fine. That's what it's for. Anyways, it was a big purchase, but I didn't have time to wait around. I had to get that ordered. Right now we're down to one blower running both basins, and uh, I don't want it to fail tomorrow. Then we'd be serious. So you want, you want approval now? Yeah, <laughs> after the fact. Uh, one thing we did get approval for was uh, new garage doors on the public works garage down at the wastewater plant. That was in the budget, so uh, those were installed today and yesterday. Uh, they look really nice. I think they're almost three times as efficient as far as the R value. So that'll be nice. Hopefully nobody backs into them. Um, better not. And the 2020 paving and utility projects uh, are going out for bid. Actually, they're going out electronically today, but they'll be in next week's and the following week's paper. Uh, again, that's for repaving the 300 block of Birch Street over by Jim. Uh, preparing the northbound lane in the 600 block of Lincoln Street. That's where we had excess trench settling from the sewer utility. Uh, we're going to be doing some water and sewer work on Briggs Street, and we're also going to repave the entire section of Briggs Street. So these are a couple of the worst streets in town are going to get fixed up. So, uh, that's all I have. Does anybody have any questions? Is that, do you think that'll be the case going forward? What's Instead that? of patching, do you think we'll have enough? We're, we're still going to do patching. Uh, we're going to do various treatments. Uh, me and Dan go around about once every week or two and try to figure out game plan. We're going to dedicate, I don't know, a third to half of our money for crack filling, at least for the next couple of years. Another 25% of that for direct patching. And then, uh, the utility is, of course, going to be the big driver behind major road yeah, improvements. Because right. we can't fix the road if we got junk utilities in yeah. it. So. The way I look at it, a lot of a lot of the newer roads right now, they need the maintenance yeah. to get those their full life on the road. And some of the other roads that are, are probably uh, eighty percent gone, we have to let those wait a little bit instead of doing a topical treatment to it, replacing um, at a later date. Yeah, we're going to do some work in house, you know, some crack filling ourselves, and along with assistance of the county. Uh, so we we want a multifaceted attack on our streets now that we actually are starting to put money towards them so. yeah good right. it's going to be a process though i mean there's we're, yeah, years years behind. Means, but but it's uh we're uh, basically playing catch up but we'll get there yeah. anybody else any other questions we'll then move to d police chief do we, need a, a, do we need a vote on that floor right there? No. <coughs> no. <laughs> I can't. No, I'll second it. <laughs> Very good. No. I, that's emergency stuff that has well, to be dealt with right away. I was telling... That's you know, where the confusion comes in, though. I know. You know, I, I was, was confused, too. I was too. telling him, they give me a little leeway here. You know, he yeah. doesn't understand it. Yeah. I said I get away with a lot more stuff than most people. Okay, but, so... Oh. Uh, but I've earned it, so... I think we should vote on it. Okay. <laughs> you really do? <laughs> I just want consistency. No. Just You'll vote on it next time we do vouchers. Sounds good. You know what? Put it on the agenda for the June meeting. Just to be official. 
I mean, it's it's after the fact, but. But it was five votes. It's got to be done. Yeah. It was five. Yeah. Good call. Yeah, emergency. Because Julie would catch it. Well, it was kind of. So would you. It was both of us because it was just discussed at the last meeting, so yeah, that kind of triggered the question. And Are you all done, Chris? What's the life on those things, please? What's that? What's the life on the blowers, anyway? This floor? This thing is only about this big. But it's a. Uh, I don't know, it weighs 385 pounds. It's only like this big. But it's a direct drive. Uh, you know, it's got a. Just like air compressor blower? No, it's 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 positive displacement. That means okay. it's got cams that roll. Okay. Like a blower on a car, except really heavy duty and really expensive. So. Okay. They, they run <coughs> non stop. So, well, they don't run non stop. They'll cycle on and off. But the one we have down there now has been running for 10 years. And, Pennies per hour. You don't know. I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been much quieter this uh, this week than it was last week. Um, the whole month has been just all COVID related for me. Um, the amount of phone calls, Jeannie um, ended up getting put on my speed dial um, toward the end of last week with all the orders and the Supreme Court making the decisions and then the county um, health department putting that one on and then it would be removed. So um, along with that, we've been working with the, um, the ordinances. Um, we're looking at um, a couple of other ones like the public nuisance one um, and a couple of um, other ones that we want to look at before we actually put the book out. So. Um, just making sure that we have peace behind some of those. So we've been looking at those. Um, along with that, we're also updating our policies and procedures. So that's a huge undertaking. Um, so I have Brian Tyler and Brian working with me on, on those. So um, that's going very well. Julie will be back um, in the office on Tuesday. Um, Brian's still gonna stay out at the school. Um, so there won't be that many of us in there. We're still limiting how many people can be in the PD at one time. So, um, we applied for a grant today for $6,332 for Bullet to Invest grant. Um, we can apply for that one for every year. We currently have a balance of $1,747 in there that we have to use by the, uh, by August. 31st, otherwise we lose that. So we had somebody come in this week and um, we have three, four, five officers that have ex that are currently wearing expired vests. So we can take up that $1,700 with some of that vest and then carry it over. We can hold them until the grant of next time. So, um, so it'll work out well. That's all I have. What's the best cost? Um, they're roughly about $735. But with the Bulletproof Vest grant, they'll pay for half of that. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, and then <coughs> you have to go with certain um, approved vests from, um, from, the, from the state, from the federal government. Um, but they're very, I mean, Every year, it seems like they're getting more and more comfortable. Um, they're getting thinner. I mean, my vest is three years old, and compared to what these guys and what he brought in, it's just night and day. Mm -hmm. Mine, mine's so much more. Mine probably weighs twice as much as the ones that are coming out. So it's kind of nice because um, in the past we couldn't. Um, the state wouldn't pay, or the federal government wouldn't pay for the outer portions of them, and now they're paying for that too. So we can wrap that in there. And then they just pick up with their uniform allowance, you know, the other portion of it. So. What do you do with the expired ones? That's what I was going to ask. Well, and we can't <laughs> just give we can't just give them away. So we, a lot of people, a lot of the officers will put them in their car door panel um, for extra security. 
um, we can also donate them back to the BBP program because there's some jurisdictions out there that can't afford to have vests, um, which is unfortunate. Um, so, or they're running around with just a ton of expired vests. What, what makes them expired? Um, the Kevlar like item. Probably like a car seat. Yeah. Car seat just expires. Yeah, the Kevlar item, it, it breaks down. I mean, oh, okay. we're wearing them 8, 12 hours a day. You know, every day that we're working. So, it, you, you get the sweat and everything else. And the fibers break down? The fibers break yeah. down, yeah. You're, you're hot in these things. When I get home, my my t-shirt's just soaking wet. So, mm. yeah. Gross. It is. Yeah. But, saves our lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, you never know when you're going to need that. So, there, there's nothing that has any value that you could... No, no. You, you couldn't refurbish or repurpose them in any way. So do they have to be fitted to each officer? Yeah. Yeah, because when you're actually sitting in a, when you're sitting in a car or and you have your your belt and everything else, if they're if they're not where they're supposed to be down towards your belly button and butting up against your your gun belt, you're gonna end up you know sitting there like mm -hmm. this um, throughout the whole shift. Um, we have our part timers. Um, we get kind of lucky with those. We uh, have a couple of them that we have just sitting there. However, they're almost to the point where they're being expired too. When I was in Chiac, and we would um, allow them to purchase, but then we did a, it was like first year, if you left in the first year, you paid back the village 100%. If you left in the second year, then you paid them another percentage, and then the third year, another percentage. If you left in the fourth year, um, we would allow you to take the best with you because it's fit for you. Mm. So you have to have like you're not supposed to overlap on the sides. You're supposed to have like a finger gap on on the sides. So um, <coughs> you know some of them that the guys are wearing that they're my part timers. You know they have gaps on them. You know this far on one of them. So mm. um, the other one took it upon himself to go out and buy his own vest just because he wants to be protected. So we could probably submit that receipt and give it back at this one with this new vest grant that we have because we'll be sitting for good. Okay. <coughs> Any other questions? If not, we'll move to E Library Director. We're, Pat, do you have um, we're meeting on Tuesday. We're, it's an extra meeting um, to talk about reopening plans. And when I talked with Allie today, the plans are all over the board as far as different libraries trying to figure out how they're going to manage manage it. You know, depending on the size of the library and everything. So anyway, we're we're meeting about that. And then I have a, a regular board meeting the following Tuesday. Okay. F is attorney. Anything? Nothing okay. G building permit <coughs> report. There is none. H is court report, and it is in the packet. Ten communications and miscellaneous business. A Black Otter Lake District news. We had a meeting last night, and David. Um, talked about the different um, contributions, the five, 5,000 this year and then the 10 can come in September because that's the start of the fiscal year for BOLD. Um, we discussed the fishing pier and the boat launch. We are having our annual meeting like we did last year, at least at this point, um, August 31st at Alonzo Park, um, planning to have hot dogs and brats again like we did last year, but I guess what uh, after the meeting, I thought, well, we might have to, I mean, last year we had, I think we had potato salad and stuff, but There's if we do it, we'll have yeah. to, we'll have to go with packaged, you know, prepackaged stuff. Um, but that's the plan, to have that on the 31st, and then our next regular meeting is July 15th. <coughs> um, Harvester next week, we'll be back in the lake. Yep. They're going to deliver. And there's four volunteers. Um, potentially four. Two for sure, but it looks like four. So two new volunteers coming. 
I think that was it, pretty right. much. Yeah. Yep. Any questions for Pat? We'll move to B, Portonville, Portonia Fire District News. Nothing on news, just a, a report as of uh, through uh, April of this year. $2,668.75 year to date has been collected for the accident scene recovery, of which the village will receive a quarter of that, approximately $667. We'll move to C, Gold Cross Ambulance Run and Report. There is none. D, Hortonville Civic Association. All the uh, refund checks were sent out. <coughs> For the drawing uh, that was supposed to happen, what this last weekend? No, the weekend nice. investor is coming yeah. Not yet. Yeah. in two weeks, yeah. so we'll start over. E Senior Activities Committee, Pat. Um, we haven't met for a while, obviously, but we are we did schedule a meeting for June 25th at one o'clock, and that technically <coughs> is our regular a regular time so some people probably won't be able to attend due to their agency's policies so we'll figure out how, you know get them in on phone or whatever we need to do but the plan is to reconvene okay 11 comments and suggestions from citizens present and there are none 12 adjournment I have a I'll make a motion to adjourn. Wait a minute. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. I paused. <laughs> <laughs>